Bushido is the fastest growing martial arts sport in Japan. There are new names, new heroes, new souvenirs to collect. No punches are pulled, no holds are barred, no quarter is given. This is hard, fast and furious. Wrestling at its best, karate, kickboxing, judo and sambo. This is Bushido, the way of the warrior. The UWFI, the sports governing body, has strict rules and regulations. You're allowed to use your forearm, but you must not use the point of your elbow. You can slap, but you cannot bite, scratch, or headbutt. Headbutting is illegal. When your opponent is on all fours, you cannot kick to the head. But as soon as one arm is up in defense, a kick to the head is allowed. When your opponent is on all fours, the rest of the body is a legitimate target. If a foul is committed, then points are deducted. Four points are conceded when a suplex throw results in a referee's count. Three points are lost for any knockdown, and one point is deducted for a suplex throw. Fighters can escape any submission hold by touching the rope, but they then concede a point. A submission at any time ends the fight. This week, we're in Osaka at the magnificent Civic Center. Another full house anticipated for a big international card. They've been queuing up round the block for a sport that's really caught the public imagination. It's the hottest ticket in town. The competitors have become major sporting personalities and heroes for millions of youngsters. The traditional bells signal the start of the entertainment. Topping the bill, a tag match between Gary Albright and Dan Seven of the USA against Salman Khasmikov and Vladimir Berkovich of Russia. Then Masahito Kakihara takes on Denis Kozlowski, but first up it's Yoji Anjo against Tatsuo Nakano.
Luigi Anjo comes into this bout on the back of four straight defeats. Last time out, he lost to Sano. He needs to win badly to improve his fight record. Six wins, 11 defeats, and just one draw. Tatsuo Nakano from Ibaraki, Elvis to his army of fans. He's short, he's stocky, he's tough as nails. He never seems to know when to give in. He lost his last fight to Kiyoshi Tamura, but that record still eight wins in 14 outings. Commentators are Jeff Thompson and our technical expert, Ted Pelk. Well, it's been a very long time, but here's the rematch between Tatsuo Nakano and Yoji Anjo. I've been really looking forward to this. It's been a long time, and they're ready to go. What do you think, Jeff? Interesting one. His referee Wada checks Anjo's hands and pretty concealed weapons. I don't think there'll need be any pretty concealed weapons here tonight. I think this is very eagerly awaited, and I think Nakano's got a score to settle. Oh, absolutely. I think they have the weapons that they have are pretty adequate and pretty deadly. They're ready to go right now, and here's the opening bell. Nakano fighting out of the red corner, Anjo out of the blue corner. Anjo in his distinctive zebra tights. Nakano, well, self-identified on the back of his black tights. Anjo very cautious. He's looking for an opening, but you notice he's not opening up with too many kicks. He doesn't want to be caught. He almost got caught right there. Very cautious. Normally... These fighters shown almost expressionless um, glare, but they actually seem to have some sort of intent on their faces tonight. Well, Anjo really wants to take back that defeat that he incurred against Nakano a little while back. And let's see if he can do it tonight. The last fight, he lost a submission to Nakano, but it was a very close fight and it could have gone either way. Well, as we know, Nakano, durable, gutsy, and seems to have got an extra spring in his step after his enforced layoff. And right now, I think Anjo is trying to open up some kicks. Nakano wants to take him down to the ground. That Nakano was a nice low kick to Nakano's midsection. Nice kick, but Nakano's not, re Na Nakano's not ready to go down, and Anjo's kind of smiling. He looks pretty confident right now. Nakano is pretty good at kicking himself, but up against Yoji Anjo, I'd have to say that Anjo definitely has the upper hand as far as striking. Once they're on the ground, it's kind of hard to say. I'd say they're pretty equally matched. We'll have to see. That I have agree with. And we saw Anjo dive for the ropes there to open up a one-point lead in Nakano's favor. As we see there, I don't know what was about to happen, but he certainly went for the ropes. Yeah, Nakano tried to set up the belly-to-back German suplex. Anjo saw it coming, and he escaped right to the ropes and he's very cautious about getting caught and even when he's getting caught he's trying to tie up Nakano's neck and throw those knees pushing him away to set up for the kicks he's trying to go for a front face lock right now and he takes him over and he's trying to set up a submission hold but I don't think Nakano's too alarmed he's a very well accomplished accomplished wrestler and he's doing pretty well so far defending against that cross lock arm bar which Anjo's trying to set up right now both fighters relatively cautious in the opening stages of this fight. Well, the last fight they had together, they were kind of exploding from the opening round. They really wanted to take it. But this time it seems that Yoji Anjo has a little bit different strategy, and I'm sure he's not going to be caught in the same hold which Nakano got him with the last time around. Nakano's face beginning to express a bit of pain. But I think it's going to take a lot more than pain to put an end to Nakano's um, attack. Good defense by Nakano. You notice how he's blocking all those knees. He's, he's really weathered those kicks pretty well. Yes, good deflection, good evasion, and blocking. And right now they're once again on the ground where Nakano probably is m the most comfortable while fighting Yoji Anjo. Shoot sign being offered to Anjo. In no immediate danger right now. It looks like Nakano's trying to set up a face lock. 
Angel's in pretty good position, and I think he'll be able to make it to the ropes right now. And showing an incredible strength as he almost pushes himself onto his feet. Yep, and they roll in the ropes. And it looked like they kind of naturally rolled in the ropes, but what is what it took a point away from Anjo. 15-13, Nakano leads. Spectators repeatedly shouting Anjo's name. He kicks and he slips. Well, that was a bad slip because now Nakano's on top and he's going to try to set up for an arm bar. Kind of lost his balance on that one kick and Nakano was very quick to making that mistake, using that uh, mistake against Anjo. He took advantage of that and he's on top right now. But Anjo looks like he has a pretty good chance of reversing the submission and he possibly could counter it. But once again, Nakano on top and he's trying to set up a clock head scissor hold. But Anjo is pretty close to the ground now. He's going to have to pull him up a little bit more for that hold. Nakano grunting as he tries to open Anjo's grip to take advantage in some way and take a decisive lead in this bout. And Anjo trying to go for a heel hold. I said before that Nakano is probably more comfortable on the ground and Anjo would want to be standing up, but it doesn't exactly look like Anjo's in any rush to get back in the standing position. He's taking him on at, at, at ground wrestling right now. Who's from the crowd at seeing Anjo's exposed knee? And it looked like Nakano had a pretty good heel hold on Anjo, but once again, he curls out and he's on top, trying to set up his own submission. They're in pretty good position right now for Anjo, at least. They're in the middle of the ring, and if Anjo can manage to pull one of those arms up, or if not the arm, possibly apply that next submission he's looking for right now, it might be good. Now it's opening up. Nice kicks, and they're starting to get through, but Nakano's setting up that belly-to-back suplex, but Anjo sees it coming, and he immediately drops down. Nakano's in, he's in danger of uh, that double wrist lock right now. Anjo was pretty quick at catching that. that. That's one thing about Yoji Anjo that really impresses me. Not only did he try to escape away from the suplex, but he's always thinking two or three moves ahead. Not only did he drop down, but he dropped down and tried to apply the double wrist lock at the same time. But we see Nakano reversing it once again, and... Anjo's in trouble. I think he's a little bit too close to the ropes now. Nakano saying something to Anjo. He's saying, kimateru, kimateru. It's, it's over, it's over, it's finished. But they were a little bit too close to the ropes. And once again, Anjo escapes to the ropes. Up in the standing up position now. Both fighters knowing the strengths of each other's attacks. And I'm noticing something. Nakano's eyes seem like they're closing up, possibly from those heel of the hand strikes to the head. A few of them have caught him right on the button. But Nakano, he's trying to make a full Nelson. Well, it was always on the cards. 15 to 11 lead for Nakano, but yet again, he's bleeding. Well, like I was saying before, his eyes look like they're starting to close up from Yoji Anjo's heads. It looked like he was trying to go for the full Nelson, but when he noticed he was having trouble with it, he just took him over with a belly-to-back suplex and over went Anjo, and he loses a point for that. So Anjo momentarily stunned. Nakano beginning to bleed. Just have to hope it's not a serious injury. Well, I don't think the nosebleed will be too bad. Nice takedown by Nakano. I'm just worried about for Nakano, if his eyes close up too much, he might have trouble seeing. Well, we saw the state Nakano got himself into last time, but as we know, gutsy, durable, and competitive. Anjo on top trying to possibly set up a face lock or something. See Anjo's arm, arm is getting blood all over it. This might be a little troublesome for him. It might make it more difficult to apply the submission. Again, referee Wada keeping a close eye on proceedings. He'll obviously want to make sure that the fighters' safety is also a consideration. Good sleeper hold by Anjo. Uh-oh. Here we go. He's, he almost had that suplex, but 
Angel's pretty cautious about those suplexes, and immediately he drops down to the ropes. This is beginning to look, yet again, very heated confrontation between these two. Anjo diving for the ropes again, fearing that suplex. Anjo going to work in his normal fashion with devastating strikes. Well, the strikes seem to be getting through earlier in the match. Nakano was, had a pretty good defense, and he was doing a pretty good job weathering those strikes, but they're slowly starting to get through, and he's probably going to have to do something on the ground while he has the chance. Although it kind of makes it hard to apply the submission with blood and sweat, nothing serious, it's just a nosebleed, and Anjo trying to go for a face lock. Now it's kind of slipping into a slipper hold. He has a pretty good grip right now. He's taking him towards the middle. That's it! <laughs> Perfect, look how, look how picture perfect that sleeper hold was. That's a surprise. Look at this. Nakano, I think, showing there he was in some sort of trouble. Look at that angle, he takes him away from the ropes, gets the body scissors to prevent him from escaping to the ropes and has a perfect, picture perfect sleeper hold. And your winner for tonight, Yoji Anjo, as he takes back that defeat. Well, I was a little surprised. Nakano never normally gives up that quickly, but it must have shown the type of sleeper hold he was in. Oh, that was a picture perfect sleeper hold. There was no way he was getting out. You see how red he was getting in the face. He really had that deep in there, and there was no escape from that, and I know that Nakano probably felt that too. Nakano, not a happy man. Defeated, blooded, and we see Anjo on his feet, happy at avenging that defeat. Certainly popular with the fans and popular with the youngsters. They're waiting for Anjo, who takes his record to seven wins now in 18, back to winning ways. Next into the ring, Denis Koslowski takes on Masahito Akihara. Masahito Kakihara, only 21. Although he beat Bad News Allen last time out, needs to sustain a continuous winning run to fulfill his early promise of being one of the UWFI's youngest stars. Most feared for his speed, his kicks, open hand slaps and heel strikes. Dennis Kozlowski of the USA, although he's only won one of his first five fights, that was against Yuko Miyato last time out, this tough American really is beginning to get to grips with the new style. And after winning the wrestling silver medal in the Barcelona Olympics, he's currently favorite for gold in Atlanta in 96. Dennis Kozlowski, the great Olympian, the great American amateur wrestler, now turned professional, going up against young Masahito Kakara from the UWFI. Dennis Koslowski with a size and weight advantage and probably Kakara with a speed advantage. 
I'd go along with that analysis. Kozlowski, strong, durable, running out of the red corner. Takahara, explosive, fast, as you said, Ted, running out of the blue corner. I'd have to say if Dennis Kozlowski can weather that barrage of strikes, that he's going to have to take it. I think the, the size, strength, plus the experience is going to have to come over Masahito Kakiara. But when they're in the standing up position, Dennis Kozlowski is in danger, and that's going to be Kakiara's game, and I'm sure he knows that. Kozlowski, I'm sure, will want to keep most of the action where it is now on the floor. Kakiara has got very useful kicks when he chooses. Oh, definitely. Not, o not only are they quick and powerful, they seem to most of the time find their mark, and espe especially even his punches, his heel of the hand strikes, they really find their mark too. Very focused individual, Kakihara. This is going to be the classic case of martial arts versus wrestling. You got Dennis Kozlowski, one of the great American wrestlers who won the silver medal in the last Barcelona Olympics. But Kozlowski getting in a martial arts kick of his own. You know, so the, all the cameramen are getting ready as soon as they're in the standing up position because they know Kagiara might take it with one kick or punch. Yes, I think as you say, Kozlowski sensing that dumps Kakihara back onto the canvas. And Kakihara really has um, deadly punches. You would, many people would think since it's a slap, an open hand blow, that it doesn't have much force, but believe me, when you hit with the bottom with the heel of your hand, that can have just as much, if not more, power than a punch when you hit somebody in the jaw or temple with it. Yes, it's a widely used technique in the martial arts, and as you say, it can be very, very effective. Kakara trying to set up his own face lock right now. I don't know if he wants to engage too much in wrestling. If he expects to put away Dennis Kozlowski with a submission hold, he should soften him up a little bit more with some kicks and punches first. Uh, I think with Dennis's superior experience, he'll be able to reverse most of the wrestling techniques on Kakara, and Kakara really doesn't want to be caught in the middle of the ring with that. Shoot sign being offered to Kakihara. But if Kakiara wants to make Dennis Kozlowski submit with a submission hold, he's going to have to take him in the middle of the ring. But like I said before, then he's in the danger zone too, especially if Dennis Kozlowski can pull out a nice reversal. Good low kick. Yes, that worried Kozlowski. Left thigh, big and powerful, but can't take too many of those. Ooh, nice shots to the head. That was a pretty useful palm strike. That was like a jab almost, but it was pretty powerful. He was really stepped forward and put his weight into that. Dennis Kozowski looks like he has, his stance has become a little shorter. He looks much better. He's defending uh, against those strikes much better than the previous fight he had. I'd agree with that, but a little worried that he's taking most of his body weight onto his back leg. Now with Kakihara's very accurate thigh kicks. That could be a little bit problematic for him. Kakiara trying to take him over. But you notice Dennis Kozlowski reverses it with a backdrop and there's there's that extra experience advantage that he has over young Kakiara. And it not only saw him lose his first point but he's also taken the count Kakiara. 15 to 11. Kozlowski leads. As we see here. Beautiful reversal. Takes him over with that back backdrop and all that extra added weight doesn't help either. Kakihara is going to have to change his fight strategy somewhat to pull back the deficit, but he's yet again trying that throw. He's going to get thrown oh. Nice reversal, and he got a cross lock. Right now he has a cross lock on Kozlowski's knee. He makes him escape to the ropes. Excellent reversal. Kozlowski showing a bit of pain. 14 to 11, the lead. If Kakiara can manage to take away Kozlowski's legs, he might have a chance just to win it. Even though Kozlowski is much bigger and stronger, if he can catch one of those vulnerable points, such as the ankle or the knee, which he's trying to do, probably the ankle would be his best bet. It looked like he was going for a cross lock on the knee, but I think he realizes that the ankle is probably his best bet. He went for an ankle lock. But we see Dennis Kozlowski, he's starting to pick up a lot of submissions while he's here, and right now he's going for the Achilles tendon hold, which might possibly be dangerous. 
Shoot sign for Kakihara. Well, we're five minutes into the bout, and we see a shoot sign from referee Wada. Kakihara is not in immediate danger, but if Dennis Kozlowski can move over and apply just a little bit more pressure, he might be able to catch him with that hold. Kozlowski having his kick returned by Kakihara. That's it. And it looks like no points were taken off. And like they naturally rolled into the ropes. I'd say Kakihara is very shrewd there. Oh. Saw the close proximity of the ropes. That was a pretty good acrobatic kick there. Oh, beautiful spinning back to, kick to the head. And Koslowski's down. That really found its mark. He kicked him to the side of the head with a heel. Koslowski in trouble. Picture perfect. I'm not sure if he meant it, but if he did, that was as good as you'll get. Now, now he's just trying to go for the kill, which he better be careful. He better not get too overconfident. Kozlowski coming back brilliantly from that. That picture-perfect kick by Kakihara. Kakihara going for the belly to back. He doesn't quite have the leverage. Will he? No. No, he was unable to do that. But he got him down, and that shows how... Um, Dennis Kozlowski's experience, he saw it coming and he weathered that suplex very well and I'm surprised that he even got up from that spinning back kick to the head. Yes, I have to say, bad enough taking a kick with one leg on the floor. But Kakihara was flying and caught him square on the chin. We've seen Kakihara use that spinning back kick before in desperation when he was really in need of one move to change the course of the match. We see Dennis Kozlowski escape from the single leg Boston Crab. But a lot of times he's, he's just doing and he really doesn't aim with that spinning back kick. But it really, it really worked for him tonight. Here we saw the striking and kicking of Kakihara countered by Kozlowski as he dumps him on the canvas. Kakihara can't go head hunting right now. If he gets too close to Dennis Kozlowski with something like a high kick, I think Kozlowski looks all right. I think he'll be able to catch it and take him down. I think Kakihara's best bet is to work on the low kicks and stay far away from Dennis Kozlowski. Right now, Kozlowski grabbed one of his kicks, took him down, and he had a good split hold. But Kakihara trying to reverse an ankle lock on Kozlowski, and he looks pretty successful with it. Yeah, he's doing just that. Kozlowski now wants out. Prepared to stomp and kick his way out as well. And there we get a nice close-up of the effectiveness of Kakihara's kicks. Do you see Kozlowski's side there? Kozlowski is still trying to work for that cross lock arm bar. Kakihara escaping the ropes. He just barely made it. And like I said before, once they're in the standing up position, Kakihara better go to his low kicks and stay far away from Dennis Kozlowski. He can't afford to get caught. The punches are good too. Uh, it looked like he got one kick into the groin. And they've stopped the action. Referee Wada has stopped the action and asking Kozlowski is, if he's okay. I think they're going to give him some time out. I think he most definitely got kicked in the groin. Um, nice and even. Ten points each. Both shake hands and resume action. The crowd applauding the sportsmanship. And I think Dennis Kozlowski is going to get ready to do something back on him. Kakiara, when he's in close range, he has to work those open hand blows. Those are working very effective for him, and it, Dennis Kozlowski is getting shaken up. Yes, but it's Kihara who gets shaken out of the ring. Referee Wada drags him back in. Kakihara looking a little bit sloppy with his kicks now. And a little bit slower. He got one kick caught. He tried to go for the high kick with it in the middle of the ring. Boston Crab, that's it. And you see how quickly that thing can end. Another victory for Dennis Kozlowski. An ecstatic victory and an ecstatic Kozlowski. Look at this. He tried the second kick. Both kicks were grabbed. And I think from there on in, Kozlowski knew he had the upper hand. And look, once he puts his weight back down on this Boston Crab, he knew that was it. It was right in the middle of the ring. No escape. A good win. Arms aloft. The winner, Dennis Kozlowski. Win number two. And there we see Kagihara receiving attention on his lower back.
take nothing away from Kakiara. He fought a great fight. It was a very exciting fight. The crowd really appreciates it. And I'm surprised Dennis Kozlowski came back from all those hits. I thought he would smother him a little bit quicker in the match, but he didn't. He took them all, but, well, he's the winner for tonight. And hope to see Kakiara come back another day. The main event of the night, an international tag contest, seven and all bright of the USA against Khasmikov and Berkovich of Russia. Salman Khasmikov of Russia is a wrestling legend, but he lost his only singles match to Takada. He's partnered by Vladimir Berkovich, another great Russian wrestler who's making his debut in UWFI. This is the top, tough American pairing, Gary Albright from Montana, just one defeat in singles. He's partnered by Dan Seven, one of the best technical brains on the circuit. Well, this is really going to be an exciting one. It's going to be a little different. All four fighters coming from a, an amateur wrestling background. There's not going to be much kicking or striking in this one. No, but we see the successful pairing of Albright and Seven continue to march on. And yes, this should be an exciting exchange. Gary Albright and Dan Severin, the tag team which beat Takata and Tamura, going up against Selman Hashmikov and Vladimir Berkovich in the long red tights who's new to the UWF International. He's basically, he has a Greco-Roman style background and he became a five-time all-European freestyle wrestling champion before ending his collegiate career at the Moscow State University. Right now we see Gary Albright going against Hashmikov. And the crowd really warming to this one from the time the bell went. And if you know amateur wrestling, you know these, this feud goes back a long time. Gary Albright went up against Salman Hashmikov for the Olympic tryouts. And that was for um, freestyle amateur rules. At that time, Gary beat Hashmikov. But let's see, it's a different set of rules tonight. Yes, and they all favor Albright, in my view. Hashmikov going for the single arm drag. But Gary Albright is very cautious, and he's not about to be thrown around too easily. Referee Wada 
Having to ask them three or four times to break. And Kashmikov actually trying to strike Albright and possibly strike Referee Wilder, receiving a warning. Albright clears. Well, and Kashmikov. Well, I told you it's going to be a little bit different tonight than the Olympic tryouts when these two went up against each other. Belly to belly. First point of the bout lost, and Hashmikov looks in trouble, and he tags out, and we get to see Vladimir Berkovich. Look at that belly to belly. Perfect leverage, perfect bridge, and Hashmikov loses a point for that. Be interesting to see how the Kovic adapts and survives possibly Albright's superior size, strength, and experience. Well, this Vladimir Berkovich has excellent credentials. Like I said, he was a five-time champion after his collegiate career. He entered many FILA international tournaments, and he's held all oh, oh, Russian oh, championships oh, from 1981 to 1983. He doesn't exactly look in as good shape as he did in the amateur tournaments. He looks a little bit overweight, but let's see how he does tonight. I think weight would be an advantage when going up someone against the size of Albright. But he doesn't seem intimidated, as we see there. Like Hashmikov, he just pushed Albright back. Right now, we see just that tie-up and clinch. Berkovich looks like he's trying to take him over for a throw, but I think he's going to have to do a lot more than that. We hear referee Wada trying to break him up as they're close to the ropes. Maybe Berkovich doesn't understand English. And Gary looks very calm. He's not exactly in it. Ooh, see a low kick from Gary. That's a turn up for the books. Albright prepared to use all the weapons at his disposal. Good knees, and even though we've said that all four of these guys come from an amateur wrestling background, they're certainly showing much more technique. We see Dan Severn come in right now, who could possibly have an advantage over the Russians since he knows um, Sambo, and he's a world champion at Sambo. As we saw there before the tag, Albright raising his arms to show that it wasn't him who was maintaining the contact there. And this is a surprise. Dan Severn's not going to wrestling. He's actually trying striking techniques, but they're having very little effect. He's not getting the weight behind those low kicks. He should stick to wrestling, what he's good at. Now, those kicks are very, very weak. And referee Wada, yes, I think rightfully warning him, because those kicks weren't finding their target at all. No, but they did find the target on the groin, and they stopped the action and give... Vladimir Berkovich a little bit of time to recover. Seven in the black trunks. Going for the arm bar. Going for that shoulder straight arm bar. And that's that's his experience from being a world Sambo champion, but I'm sure the Russians are certainly no stranger. They have Sambo and Judo in Russia as well. Hashbikov being instructed back to this corner. Berkovic makes it to the ropes. And Berkovic looks like he's run out of energy already. He looks like he doesn't have such good stamina. Like I said earlier, he looks slightly out of shape. Yes, this looks a little untidy. Seven not doing himself much justice here. I mean, yes, it's great to try new stuff, and what better than on a new fighter? Well, I'd rather experiment with my strikes against Berkovich than someone like Takata or Yamazaki or Anjo, but I think Dan Severn should just stick with, with what he does best, wrestling. Shoot sign there for Berkovich. The crowd's possibly sensing a victory, but no. Berkovich certainly knows the rules to find the ropes, as we see here. He's got a double wrist lock on him, and he's trying to pull it up like a modified hammer lock. Berkovich in trouble. And if he's tired out, he should tag in with Hashmikov. Yes, I think more pride than anything else keeping him in there. But Dan Seven for me, really, I think mean, it looks like pizza patter out there, Ted. He can't throw those kicks and punches. He has to stick to what he's good at doing, which is his wrestling, his suplex techniques, his ground submission. That's where he's going to do the best. Nice belly to belly, and he's setting up a good submission hold right now he's trying to pull that arm behind him and that's what Dan Severn has to do he has to stop with the strikes shoot sign for Berkovich Dan Severn's heavily strapped right hand trying to get the grip he needs he's taking the upper hand in this tag bout going for a leg submission 
Berkovich knows he's in trouble. The crowd, were, the crowd were willing Berkovich to get the tag there. Hashmikov comes in, very eager to settle the score with Dan Seven, and he's doing just that. And both of these fighters who are not skilled at striking are taking wide blows with really telegraphing them. With a few getting in, I don't think it's going to end about, though. I don't know. I think if Hashmikov actually gets through with one of those strikes, he looks a lot more powerful than Dan Seven in this area. Yes, but I'd like to I'd like to see these guys stick to wrestling. Shoot side for Hashmikov. Nice drag that he took him over with. And Dan Seven might be looking to tag out with Gary Albright right now. Crowd really loving this. Here we go, belly to belly and Hashmikov trying to set up a straight arm bar right now. Shoot sign now for seven. And Dan Severin, probably the smallest guy in the ring right now. It's kind of funny to call somebody who weighs over 270 pounds a small guy, but he certainly is in there tonight. I'm not sure what Hashmikov has planned, but I think he's about to show his intent. He tried to go for the cross lock on the knee, but unsuccessful. And I think Dan Severn should be tagging out right now. He looks a little bit tired. As we see there, a roll into the ropes. 21 points to 17. Seven and Albright lead. Hashmikov trying to set up something right now. I'm not sure what he was trying to set up. He just seemed to dump Dan Seven. And Dan Severn looks tired right now. He should be tagging out right now. He looks in trouble. I'm wondering if his right hand is actually giving him any trouble because he doesn't seem as confident on his right side as he normally would be. Possibly, but we'll have to see. Maybe that could be a determining factor in the later stages of the match. One point pulled back by Bergovich and Hashmikov. 21 points to 16. He's going for a single leg dive, but he's, a lose he's losing a lot of that sharpness which he had earlier in the bout. I think it's about time to tag out. And he does. Yeah, there he goes. And this is obviously a strategy by all right seven. They pin their opponent in the corner to allow the maximum advantage upon changing and tagging over. Fireman's carry takes him over. Scores a point for that, but no damage done. And Gary's not exactly alarmed right now. He doesn't seem worried about that throw. Not at all. Albright isn't alarmed. And both Albright and Seven have a five-point lead. Looks like he kind of lost balance when he when he was about to take that throw. Ooh. Sets up a knee. Here we go. Belly to back. Right on the back of the neck. You saw him throw close to 300 pounds. Hashmikov right on the back. Hashmikov is in pain. Showing the first signs of trouble here. But Albright wants him back on his feet. He wants him back in there, but he's still trying to shake off the effect. And has to tag over to Berkovich. There's no way he's immediately going to fight after taking that belly-to-back suplex. He found he fell right on the back of his neck and head. And here comes in Vladimir Berkovich, which I would I would have to say, in my opinion, is the weaker link of the Russian team. In that case, they are definitely in trouble now. 20 to 14 lead. Albright pressing now, and I'm not sure if that wasn't a punch to the stomach. Then Berkovich thinks it was a punch to the stomach because. There was the glare, he's not happy. And I think for the Russian team, the person they should be trying to attack is Dan Severin. It would be smart to try to make him submit rather than trying to go up against Gary Albright. They should try to keep Dan Severin in the ring. So they very quickly, Referee Wilder was signaling that might have been an elbow. But I'm sure if it was an elbow, it would have certainly dropped Berkovich. And he's in trouble. It looks like Berkovich is trying to give up. Is he? I'm not sure, but Albright isn't giving him the opportunity. Referee Wada, hold on a minute. We now see Hashmikov looking to come in on the action. But the crowd has almost put him back out. Well, we don't need him in the ring. He has to stay back in his corner where he belongs. But it seems that Albright's given Berkovic a reprieve, but he boots him out of the, the ring. This crowd really getting into this. Albright motioning him to come on back in. There's a lot of pride at stake here. There's a lot of pride at stake here at this match tonight. Everybody's out there to prove something and nobody wants to lose. You 
see how enthusiastic everybody is and look like Hushmi Kuff was actually going to run into the ring and do something, but... Hushmi Kuff may have got a surprise. I think Albright can handle both of them. 20 points for 12. Albright seventh lead. Albright tags. Dan Seven. Here comes Dan Severn, who's really showed a good account of himself tonight. But he should stick to his wrestling techniques instead of going to the striking. He's doing very well with the wrestling ground submission work. Berkovich in trouble. But still very sloppy work by Severn. Very sloppy indeed. But yes, back to familiar territory. He's doing good with the suplexes and the groundwork. And he has a good submission hold on here. And Berkovich really looks in trouble. This might be it. Has become yet again leaving his corner to assess the situation. Is he giving up? It looks like no. Shoot signs being offered, but he does look in trouble. But he certainly knows his way to those ropes. Maybe he found his way to the ropes quickly. His techniques of escaping to the ropes are pretty well, but he's going to have to show some offense right now. Dan Severn's going to have to take him away. He can't be hitting him with the strikes. He's just setting himself up, and he got caught. And now Berkovich trying to set up a submission hold. And he looks like he's got a single leg Boston Crab. And I tell you, if this was to be pulled off, this would be an upset. And I think Dan Severn would have to shoulder the blame. Those strikes and thrusts just haven't been effective. But we see a double shoot sign being offered. But I think Berkovich has the upper hand right now at this moment. But we see Dan Severn, he's reversed it with an Achilles tendon hold, and this looks pretty good now. Yeah, and he makes Berkovich escape to the ropes. Lose another point, a big gap, a big 10 to 20 gap right now. They have a lead on 10 points. Yes, and we can see blood showing on Berkovich's face. So some Dan Severn strikes must be getting through. Well, he's telegraphing him, and they're really wide blows. But I guess to someone with an amateur wrestling background with no striking technique, it's, they're not used to those kind of hits. Timekeepers and referees are getting into the action now as they attempt to re-establish Dan Seven's presence in the ring. Hashbikov tags. Seems very enthused to want to get things done in there. He's taking him up off his feet. He's grabbed his arm. He's caught him totally. Here we go, middle of the ring, cross lock, arm bar. That's it, that's it. What he's got an him. upset. And he's not letting go. Referee Watt is trying to break him, but Dan Severn gave up, but Hashimikov is not letting go, and I think that was a little bit poor on sportsmanship. As soon as Dan Severn gave up, he should have let go of that arm. That's a very dangerous hold, and as soon as the referee breaks you, you have to let go of that. But look at this. Hashimikov knew what he was doing, he knew what he wanted, Look at this here, and he knows he's got it. Look, he's giving up right there. Hashmikov has to let go a little bit earlier. But this is still all the same. A big upset. Hashmikov, Berkovic, the winners. I mean, Albright looked very upset and very disgusted. I'm kind of sorry we didn't really see a good account of Gary. Gary really didn't have a chance to show himself tonight. And, oh... It looks like Gary's upset about Hashmikov not letting go when he should. Ooh! Hashmikov is not intimidated by Gary Albright. This could well get untidy. Referee Wilder, the cornerman. Everybody's getting involved. Albright says, come on, this ain't finished. Well, it's very unusual to see something like this after a match, but Hashmikov did hold on to that cross lock arm bar a little bit too long. But they're your winners, Hashmikov and Berkovich. And it won't end there.